Hi SJ, welcome to the Pro Squash Challenge Series here at St George's. Your first match in the series against Gina Kennedy, a repeat of the English final recently. How do you feel about that one? Yeah, it's really great to be back at St George's. I think the last time I was here was for the British Open in 2012. So <laughs> just a little, uh, a little gap. So good to, good to be back and uh, see, see how the club's doing, but also to uh, be able to come and be part of the, the series, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I think you know, Gina will be uh, raring to go and... Uh, She'll have definitely learned a few lessons from last time, I think. So hopefully we'll have a good match. Yeah, it looks set to be a cracker, but who did you play in 2012 when you played here in the British Open? Um, I played Ashley Blake on this court in qualifying, and then I got a lesson from Natalie Grinham over there. Ah, <laughs> the graveyard of the stars, but she was obviously a fantastic player. Who, you, who were your idols in uh, pro squash over the years growing up? Uh, oh, I think that's, that's a difficult one. We didn't have the uh, benefit of YouTube and Squash TV when I was younger, so um, I, it was hard to actually, you know, I didn't get to see much women, women's professional squash. Uh, so I think, like, the, you know, I was pretty in awe the first few times I got to see clips of uh, Cassie playing and then... Um, then Nicole David later on, I think, you know, she's the ultimate, ultimate professional. And although I think I don't necessarily model my game on, on how she played, I, um, you know, I'm in sort of awe, I was always in awe of her physicality and, and that aspect. So I think she's been a great ambassador for the sport. And uh, yes, yeah, so I think she's at the top of the list. Probably one of the most famous <laughs> squash players ever, Nicole David. Her posters everywhere when you get off the plane and in Malaysia, uh, and still very yeah, well followed. Yeah. They are all in Egypt now too. Actually, you get off the plane, and there's uh, most of most of the Egyptian players on this on the side of the uh, tunnels to the to back to the uh, terminal, which is pretty cool. That's that's great for the game. I, I remember as a boy going on the train and seeing Gamal Awad and Ahmed Safwet on a grey Z advert blown up on a billboard at the station and things like that. What, what do you think we've got to do to resurrect the popularity of squash in the UK? I think just um, visibility is key. I think you know the phrase, you've got to see it to be it type of thing. So I think the more we can get the personalities and things of the squash players over, but also um, just general visibility in media, being able to, and actual, I guess, print, traditional print media, but also... TV, YouTube, uh, social media. So I think the players can do a lot themselves from that from that perspective, which you're seeing a lot more of. Um, so I think you're going to see the the generations going through now are very much uh, a digital digital focused, and I think that's that's what we uh, need to focus on as well. Yeah, build the personalities, as you say, and get them in. And as you say, back in the day, there wasn't so much coverage. The, the squash TV coverage has improved immensely um, and that's got to be a key factor in, in helping the growth. Absolutely, I think you, if you go and watch some of the squash on YouTube from, from a lot of years ago in the sort of 70s and things, you can't really see the ball. <laughs> Whereas I think now the, the high definition cameras and everything like that and all the different angles, you get to see you know, in, perfect, um, in, in perfect vision and and you get to see the, the technique, literally the exact ball strike and everything like that right up close and the emotions, of the, right down to the emotions of the players. So I think the, the production and the cameras and everything is just taking it up. You know, yeah, and watching on a bigger just, screen, I think, has been a big difference. If you watch it on the TV, it's, it's yeah, really fantastic. I think the ability to just get it up on your TV quickly whenever you want it is, uh, is invaluable. I think, you know, squash TV for... The amount it is per year is an absolute bargain for the for the quality and the number of matches you're getting and and everything like that. And I think you're only going to see that go up and up and up. And you know, I think it's a really exciting time from a PSA perspective with um, sort of new investment coming in to build the sport. So I think that's only going to increase the uh, exposure and the um, I guess the opportunities for the players and push the push the prize money up, which ultimately. 
um, and bring more sponsors in, which is just going to build the game at the top, and uh, then everything below will will follow. Fingers crossed. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a, <laughs> it's a combination of factors. We know it. We know it's a great game. It's just that. Just convincing the rest of them. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, well, all the best for today and look forward to talking to you after the match. Have a great match. Thanks, Danny. Well, Gina, welcome back to the Pro Squash Challenge Series here at St George's Hill. Thanks. In the last round, you beat Jasmine Hutton of Sussex and today you have a, another challenge in the, in the shape of the English champion, Sarah Jane Perry, who you lost to narrowly in the final. Are you looking forward to the match? Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's always like such a great learning experience to get on court with the likes of SJ, obviously, like world class player, world number six. So I feel really lucky to have the opportunity to play. So yeah, thanks for inviting me down. And you, uh, you completed, uh, and you, in fact, you were a US collegiate champion, if I'm right in saying <laughs> it at one point, having been at, having been at Harvard. Um, how are you finding it? The timing of this COVID pandemic is not particularly good for you starting your pro career. Yeah, no, the timing really did me dirty a bit. I decided um, when I was doing my last year at college, I decided not to play pro tournaments because I figured, you know, I'd have all the time in the world once I left and graduated and I wanted to enjoy my final year there. Um, I was still training um, as if I were a pro, but just not competing. And obviously then that plan um, fell down the a little bit because um, obviously I haven't been able to play a tournament uh, in over a year. Luckily I've been playing the England squash events and stuff and having stuff like this to keep competitive matches um, available but yeah it's definitely not been the best start to my pro career. We're, we're looking forward to seeing you on the pro tour as soon as we get back after the Covid-19 pandemic as it, as it gradually dies down we hope. <laughs> Just tell us a little bit about um, the rest of your life, your life outside squash, because obviously you were quite academic. What degree did you do at Harvard? Yeah, so um, at Harvard I concentrated in psychology with a secondary in economics. And since graduating and because of the pandemic, I decided to do a part-time master's at Nottingham University. So um, I'm based up there, um, which is great. The facilities at Nottingham are amazing and the support I get there is uh, really, really good. So I wanna say thank you to them. Um, so I'm studying health psychology um, on the side of my training. Um, but yeah, I also come back to London quite a lot to train at home at Burke Hampstead and with my coach, Ben Ford. So yeah, so quite busy, <laughs> which that's, is good. That's fantastic. And what about hobbies? Let everybody know what your hobbies are. Hobbies, yes. A bit, thinking of a hobby is a bit weird in these circumstances, isn't it? It's like I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> In normal times, you know, I just love like seeing my friends and traveling and going out for dip, going out for coffee is, you know, one of my favorite things to do, which can't do that You've so saved much. saved a fortune though. <laughs> Have saved a fortune, that's true. Um, but yeah, just kind of like spending time with friends, like exploring new places. Um, so I hope, can't wait to get back to that when, when, you know, that's available. Brilliant. Well, have a good match today. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, all the best. <laughs> Thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to St George's Hill Lawn Tennis Club, the Pro Squash Challenge Series match between Georgina Kennedy, former US intercollegiate champion, who went to Harvard University, hails from Kent, and Sarah Jane Perry, the English champion. Georgina serving in the black t shirt, and Sarah Jane receiving in the pink. Georgina immediately gets scoring underway with a quick little boast. Caught SJ napping a little bit. This match, a repeat of the English Championship final. SJ won love. Georgina putting in a great boast, her trademark boast whipped in from the backhand. SJ took her eye off the ball there a little bit and Georgina 
taxis are a bit, but they're dying length. Impressive start. From the young woman of Kent. SJ getting in front, looking to volley. Slightly loose there, as was Georgina. An uncharacteristic. Sloppy shot from Sarah Jane Perry. Giving Kennedy a three love lead. Kennedy pitching her serve onto the side wall. Which is what all players should try and do most of the time. Again, forcing another loose shot. Bad start from Sarah Jane. Perry here, but Georgina Kenny Kennedy has started very purposefully. Just finding her length now. Forcing in turn a weak shot. A lovely disguised chop cross court. Fairly effortless. Sarah Jane favouring the backhand serve. Get a nice angle and there we see the quick front wall here at St George's Hill and two quick fire cross court forehands from Kennedy so not the greatest start for the world number six six one down Kennedy has the advantage of having beaten the home club's Jasmine Hutton, who came third in the English Championship in her previous challenge. That's a lovely boast. That's twice she's done that now. Puts the opponent on the back foot and then she whips it in. Bit of luck for SJ at last. She regains the serve at 2-7 in the first game. Very purposeful from Gina Kennedy, looking for the volley. Length improving now from SJ. More diminutive Kennedy, holding her own on the tee. Bit of a riposte from Sarah Jane Perry there with a Fantastic boast of her own. 3-7. Find the wall with her serve. Kennedy going for the cross-court kill. Another fantastic boast. Made Kennedy scamper. And that's a much better length from SJ. Finding a rhythm a bit. 4-7. That time Kennedy found a perfect length, using the quick front wall to her advantage to get the ball deep, but then clipping the side wall, which as I've mentioned in earlier commentaries is quite grippy. The weight of shot slightly greater from Sarah Jane Perry. Forcing Georgina to scramble a bit, but beautiful, tight backhand, short backhand drop there. Putting Kennedy 9 4 up. Again, eager to get on with it. Quite a fast pace. Moving back to the tee. Beautifully. It's good to see. Sarah Jane getting into it more. Interesting angle on the boast there. First one that Gina's missed. Sarah Jane Perry comes back in at 5 9. Found her way into the game there. Like we have a match on our hands. Kennedy hang on to take this first. It's 
slightly errant, but she's getting everything back. Back in the rally. A lovely little drop shot there. Let's stay where she likes to be dominating. Held the T well. Short forehand straight kill. 6-9. Nice little boast, but Kennedy was on to it, Gina Kennedy. Plays with a great sense of urgency. That's a stroke. Well, it should have been a stroke. But given us a lap. 10 6 for game balls. That bow, she's almost running back and then she puts it in just when you least expect it. SJ finding more consistent length at last, getting her own deep ball to fade into the corner. Short by Kennedy on the serve. Good width from SJ. Stopping Georgina. From volleying as much as she'd like. Pinned her back. And that one just clipped. The tin. 8-10. Sarah Jane Perry very much in this first game now. Showing the younger player to close it out. Not good enough width from SJ. Allowing... Georgina Kennedy to capitalise and take the game 11-8. So a good first game, especially for Gina Kennedy. Sarah Jane Perry off to a slow start, found some sort of a rhythm, but it was a little bit late. But as I, as I said before, we have a match on our hands now. Gina Kennedy looking for revenge for her defeat at the hands of Sarah Jane Perry in the English final. Sarah Jane Perry won the Black Ball Open. In December, Claim, claiming some fine scalps on the way. Gina Kennedy back on court first, eager to keep the ball warm, getting into forehand practice. Can she go on as she left off and start the second? as she started the first. Good to front run. So one love to Gina Kennedy, having won the first game 11-8. Just waiting for time to be called. And she starts the second game with a backhand serve. Gina Kennedy coached in Kent by Ben Ford. Having attended Harvard, she's now continuing with her education at Nottingham. Forehand both clipping the tin, bringing Sarah Jane in to serve at one love. Nice little cross court chop. Sarah Jane's movement. Hugely improved over the years. Shot plays always been fantastic. Nice variety. SJ. And a fine base from Kennedy. A rally a bit more protracted than some of the ones we've had earlier. 
smooth return of serve down the wall. That's the difference the professionals can return straight, put their opponents under a lot of pressure. So SJ dominating, forcing a weak shot, slightly casual drop from SJ, having set, set herself up. She then went and set Gina up for a shot of her, of her own. More purposeful though. From the world number six in pink. A little trickle boast. Gina put herself in a very bad position then. Might have scrambled it back. Didn't ask. Love from SJ. Great control from Kennedy with the ambitious backhand volley drop, but played it with a bit of margin for error. And that one was off the frame. Apologies from the young lady from Kent. more experienced opponent. Too much time on the ball. Great hitting from SJ. Good variety. Tremendous power. And a beautiful length forcing the back wall boast. Tricky shot to get accurate parameters. Let that volley drop a bit. The ball was coming down fast. Made it difficult for SJ to control it. 4-3 to Kennedy. Likes to set herself up with the boast and the backhand drop. Good reach from Perry. Gina digging it back. Trademark boast. Just clipping the tin again. Gina looked like she knew the minute she hit it wasn't quite right. That time Gina returning cross court, which is fine as long as you get it wide enough. Fast pace rally, mostly to the back. Both players looking to dominate. SJ forcing the opening and playing it back to Georgina. We missed a simple chance there. Take a narrow lead in this second game. One love to Gina Kennedy. 5-4 to Sarah Jane Perry. Quick return of serve, chopped cross court by Gina Kennedy. Gains parity. At five, five all. Again, fast and furious. Be honest. Gina, just a double bounce, 6 5. SJ bounces the ball a few times. Slightly unusual action. She's tried that Aussie boast a few times. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. Gina was wise to it. I was just saying that SJ, when she serves on the backhand, has the ball. Fairly far back. And flicks it back with a very strong forearm and wrist to get the desired result. Kennedy working her opponent with that backhand drop nicely. A boast again. SJ wise to it. Good quality rally. 
great get. It's that post again. It's going to become very famous. Gina Kennedy. Hasn't really played much on the Pro Tour. Certainly looking to get going once COVID's through. She need to stem errors like that. By and large, she's, she's a very steady player whose shots seem to improve each time we see her play. Tremendous retrieving abilities. Tipped by many to go all the way. KG rally up and down the back end. Fine line for Gina Kennedy. Not afraid to put SJ at the front when she plays a constructive good shot. If she gives her too much time, like there, a couple of times in that rally, she's punished. She knows she's got to move her. She doesn't want to take risk so she's got to move her quickly to the front with a small margin for error quite rare to see Gina Kennedy off balance but that time she was giving the stroke away by hitting the ball back to herself Frightened to attack off the serve, though. A nice array of kills. <laughs> Possibly. Could have looked for a stroke there. Gina Kennedy chose to play it. And it didn't work to her advantage. So, sh shot selection. Deserted her a little bit. Looked a little bit hurried on the ball there. And Sarah Jane Perry levels the scoring. 11-7. So it's now one game all. We're on the balance of play. SJ, a worthy winner of that game. We're beautifully poised score-wise here as we go into the third game. St George's Hill, one of the biggest and most famous members clubs in the country with its large number of tennis courts including many grass courts, four squash courts, three glass backs, and one all-glass court, where you see the action in the Pro Squash Challenge, but also many other events over the years. The court holds a maximum of 260 people, 166 seats. Quite a bare, bare pit atmosphere when it's full. And Sarah Jane, as she said in her interview, hasn't played here since the 2012 British Open, where the qualifying for men and women was held, and the first round for the ladies. Gina Kennedy, more local to St George's Hill, hasn't played so much on the glass court. Certainly seems to favour her game. So the fast pace continues with a smattering of shots. Lovely chopped drop from mid court on the forehand. 
This girl's using the boast well. And that's better from Perry. Good pressure. Very accurate. Very talented ball player. Sarah Jane Perry. She's got to be very good to play at this level, but she's exceptional. She's turned herself into a fabulous athlete as well. Moving well onto the ball. Looking to dominate. And just the pressure from playing against the world number six. Forcing more er errors out of Gina Kennedy than she'd like. Languid, short, semi-triple, trickle boast from Sarah Jane Perry. Didn't fool Gina Kennedy. So here we are at two all in the third game. SJ volleying well, looking to lob, not quite getting the height. That time she got the height. Slightly loose. Tough rally. For both girls. Wonderful both. Great retrieval from SJ. She covered the ground well there. She knows she's got a match on her hands. Probably just about a lap. To all. A clear path to the ball for Perry. Set Gina Kennedy up there for the whipped in cross court. 3 2, Gina Kennedy. Strop shot from Perry. Kennedy. Match for it. Quick hands. Gina Kennedy on the backhand volley drop. Question, questioning uh, which side to come in to serve. So focused on the match, she couldn't remember which side she was serving from. That's a great shot. Well up by Perry. And I think it just clipped the tin there. Perry just querying Gina's pickups, but all look good. 5 2, Gina Kennedy. Whips in across court. Straightens it out beautifully there, SJ. And again, this is hard pressure. And there's that. Languid, short boast that doesn't carry across the court, but that time from mid-court. Didn't expect that. Wasn't that bad a serve. They got completely marmalised by Gina. She's 6-3 up. A twist and turn, SJ. There's the famous St George's glass court jam. A bit between the side ball and the front ball. And there's a little dead patch there somewhere. It's pretty hard to find it on purpose, but it's coming to play at some vital points. Time for SJ. That's that post again. And if you take your eye off it for a minute, Gina Kennedy looks like she's going to run back and hit that straight, and she just Puts in, softens the ball, uses the side wall to soften it even more, and puts in a very short boast. And if you're on the back foot, like Sarah Jane was there, that time she was on the front foot, so she got it with ease. But the time before, she was on the back foot. She's getting wary, uh, aware of it now. But even when she was there, it still caught her out. 8 4, Gina Kennedy. 
and the work that you have to do to keep retrieving that post is, is hard. Slight, slightly slap dash there. SJ losing a little concentration. Setting herself for the return. And I think Gina Kennedy caused her own interference there, running into the back of SJ, who was entitled to the space that she took. 5 9. Lupia Deepa return from Kennedy. SJ playing a bit more patient. Always looking to be constructive though. Kennedy too when she gets the opportunity. Two shots in particular. That post. Backhand drop. Brilliant length from Sarah Jane Perry. 6 9. Gina Kennedy attempting the back wall boast. Went out of court. Channel Bass sponsors the major men's PSA tournament on the front wall. She just got a, a chop shot with a lot of cut from SJ. Sprayed that Gina, choosing to play it and making Sarah Jane run the long, all the way around. So it actually worked in her favour. Not taking the stroke there. Twisting Perry again. Not quite wide enough. 10-6. Four game balls. And it was a clip. And Sarah Jane said it's just the tiniest clip. But it was a loose shot. Interfered with the backswing. Stroke to Kennedy. Who takes the game. 11-6. So 2-1 to Gina Kennedy. In this pro squash challenge. Next week. We have Tesney Evans. The world number nine. From Wales. In action. Against her. Fellow countrywoman Emily Whitlock. Both from the north of Wales and will be an integral part of the Welsh team in the Commonwealth Games when they face off here on Monday, the 29th of March. So the winner of Tesney, Evans and Emily Whitlock will play a New Zealander based in Bristol, Joelle King. And whoever triumphs out of those three will play the winner of this match for our first ever Pro Squash Challenge Series ladies title. And it's hoped that even after COVID, our champion will face challenges from all around the globe. Several countries have expressed an interest in holding eliminating matches. It's exactly what we're doing here. We're eliminating players to get to the final stage. It's a bit like boxing. And for a title bout, Gina Kennedy, 2-1 up, trying to book a place in that title match. Gets off to a slightly lucky start. I can't remember who said it. It's always a good quote. Luck is an extension of skill. She's certainly riding her luck. 2-1. One love up. Absolutely superb boast. 
really putting the world number six under pressure. SJ hit a measured good length there. So keep in touch. One, two. Not wide enough by Gina Kennedy. And then her drop shot there hit the sidewall, popping out for SJ. Good rally. Kennedy moving a bit too much on the ball, but getting in front in the end. Just a little control in that rally, but some of that's because she's trying to play at such a fast pace. To bustle SJ into errors. That was the difference. She gave her too much time on the boast. SJ possibly slightly overplaying that little boast. Kennedy's wise to it. Trying a shot or two. And there's that. Our other favourite shot, that backhand drop. Might have been a stroke. Some doubt there though. That given. 3 1 to. Kennedy, nice return. Very confident in playing that drop. But that's the fine line between hitting a special backhand drop and giving your opponent a little bit too much time on the ball. And that one popped up nicely, giving SJ time to really aim her shot. Moving well on that forehand, putting a nice forehand drop. That's where the boast went wrong a little bit for Gina. Three all. SJ hanging on in there. But not reacting to the quick, quick fire, short, unexpected return from Gina Kennedy. She's mixed her tactics beautifully today. Bouncing with urgency, clearing nicely. Quite tight enough on the floats down the wall. Good skills. It's a good rally. And there's that sh a little boast again. That time it set her up. Gina was unable to do anything very constructive with it. Four all. there from SJ. And that beautiful chopped half court forehand running away from Kennedy towards the crack and nick between sidewall and floor. Five fours, Sarah Jane Perry. Two one down. Kennedy hits a good length. Another one. She goes for a little chop herself there. That boast again. A bit more successful now, but Kennedy was wise to it. Gina really made SJ run the length of the court there be beautifully. Pinned her right in the back left corner. Wider boast from SJ. A wide cross court, but good angle for Kennedy to attack. SJ who squeezed in the tight drop down the backhand side to get her nose in front in this fourth game. 2-1 down though. Bounces the ball several times. She means business. Pins in the serve. Fabulous length from SJ. Nathan Kennedy, a bit helpless at the back. 7 5. Good 
Jonathan Kelly. Good boost. SJ relieving the pressure. Always a good thing to do when you're under pressure. And Kennedy. Quite happy to go short quite a lot, but that one was pretty difficult with SJ standing in front of her. A bit of a, not, not the greatest shot from Gina. Just SJ an 8-5 lead. SJ sprays it. Gina, very clean. Both of these girls chose to play it again. Looking to advantage to take a point. Gina guessed right. Read the cross court, but that's why it's so important to get the width on your cross courts. SJ demonstrating there. And again, she gets a good width. Making Kennedy dig. Sets herself up. And even the speed of Kennedy can't get that shot back. 10-5, five, five game balls. A two all. Good retrieval, good lob. Slightly sloppy, still four game balls. As Kennedy gets the serve back. from Perry. forcing Perry to scoop low well read by Gina and this is a fantastic rally she's getting everything back Got slightly desperate but it just showed the athletic ability of Gina Kennedy getting everything back that the world number six threw at her. Making her play one extra shot. Slightly headless in the end though. Giving Sarah Jane Perry the game 11-6. So, here we are. Beautifully poised. Two games all with a very exciting fifth game in prospect here on the glass court at St George's Hill one of only a couple of clubs to have such a court it's a sadly uh, not so used one at Abbeydale Sheffield which used to stage the British Junior Open which is more latterly moved to Birmingham, where it's held at the university, Edgebaston Priory, and several other local clubs, the early rounds at least. The university put, put an all-glass court Hall. Players come from all over the world to play there. Of course, another all glass court permanent one in Britain is at the National Squash Centre in Manchester, which is next to the Etihad Stadium. Where England hold their national squads and many national championships. And they're all up there next week training for the Commonwealth Games. Doubles being a big part. So, SJ Perry serving to all. To cover this dying length on the volley. Meaning business. Gina Kennedy again. Not stroke hunting at all. And SJ reciprocating by playing a ball that was loose. Good to see. That's tighter. SJ wise to the boast. Important rally. And that was a bit of a sad ending. I don't know if Gina's grip slipped slightly or she... Her decision making was slightly faulty. She didn't 
mean to do that, but hits SJ the ball just travelling to the front wall. So unlucky. One of those quirky rules in squash. It wasn't dangerous. It was accidental, but because it was travelling straight to the front wall, the point goes to the striking player. If it's done on purpose. It's deemed to be dangerous play. Never used, never used to seem to be. Got a few deliberate whacks. Getting in each other work, other's way a little bit. One love to Kennedy from the right. Mixing the pace by SJ. Great rally. Quality. Going up. Tribute to Ken Gina Kennedy. SJ knows just how well she's got to play in this fifth. To win. And herself a ch chance. The first press cross challenge title. Fantastic rally, good drop from Kennedy. Brilliant retrieval from SJ, but not able to make it hard enough for Gina Kennedy. Two love, purposeful, bounces the ball, sets itself to serve. Lifts, gives herself time. Good variety. Nothing flashy, just consistent, but never boring, because she's thinking all the time, she's being constructive, looking for opportunities, playing with intelligent variety. Not quite as tight as she probably will become in future years, Gina Kennedy. Part of that is because of the weight of shot from her higher ranked illustrious opponent. But the weight of shot there, forcing Gina back. Again, dominating work that Gina's doing and however intently she watched the ball there she was fooled by Sarah Jane's cross court to all to all and she just missed that it's a chance Slightly closed the face there. Just caused the ball to go down. Parry ahead for the first time now. In the match. 4 2 in the fifth game. The finish line is in sight. Volley boast. Gina manoeuvring SJ well. That's a good touch on that cross court. Chopped volley drop. A great touch from SJ. Lovely rally. She clears well on the front right. SJ giving Gina plenty of room to play the ball. There you go, go and get it. She repeatedly does, but SJ holding a nice lead now. That's a let. SJ wanting more. No video review here, though. So let probably the fair decision.
pace still high. Slightly lazy boast. Mess check. Three five. Gonna be serving. Beautifully across the middle. Great way to shot from SJ. And again, forcing Gina onto the back foot. You no, know she can be dangerous off the back foot because she whips that boast in. This time, choosing to play steadily to the back, clawing her way back into this fifth. Four, five. covered by Perry but she's putting in a lot of work that was loose Gina again choosing to work her work SJ great recovery from SJ good lob Gina giving herself time as well both girls giving themselves time in desperate situations and that wasn't good enough and however much SJ doesn't like it that was loose landed on the tee it's a stroke in any language. Probably will realise that if she looks at the replay. Five all. Two all, five all. Setting in her nerves, slight interference, therefore a player can ask for a let. When it's not done repeatedly, no referee would take offence. A little spin on that backhand drop, that's a difficult shot to play and leave so short. And SJ did that very well, edging into the lead 6-5, very exciting. Just sometimes the concentration waning, having got herself in a good position. So Kennedy back in, another loose shot from Perry. It's been a little bit of a mix. Brilliant qual high quality, just a smattering of loose shots like that. Only a let. Now a bit lucky there. For choosing. Dangle. Let's give a let. Difficult when there's doubt to give anything but a let. Sometimes the with the benefit of hindsight and the video replay referees can see differently. There's that boast again. Didn't manage to follow up with a great length. Forcing SJ to stoop low. Slightly tired movement there. On to the backhand drop of Kennedy. 7-6, Gina Kennedy, edges in front, loose from SJ, loose from Gina, but that post is, that's a great combination, backhand boast that's not let her down all day, followed by a perfectly weighted high backhand volley, which is a difficult shot to play. Again, when it's not particularly expected, a chop from the back and cross the body. Perry, late to see it, tries one of her own, but Kennedy was there. Great domination by SJ. Goes to the nick, didn't quite find it. Oh, 
nine six to Kennedy. SJ's got the work to do. Lifts beautifully again. And that time she attempted the cross court short shot, which found the tin. 10 6 to Gina Kennedy. Four match balls out of nowhere. Goes for the boast again. Almost pays dividends. That was a fantastic volley drop. From Sarah Jane Perry, 7 10. She's still there. Hanging on in. Doesn't want to give it away to the young pretender. Great drop again, leaving it shorter than it looked. Forcing the error from Kennedy. Anxious to snatch victory. Got to be careful, she just want to snatch defeat. Another error. Pressure. 10 9 to Gina Kennedy. Sarah Jane Perry serving to stay in the match. One more match ball left. And what a shot to end it on. Again, unexpected off the serve. We haven't seen that many of those, but a fantastic win for Gina Kennedy. Thank you for watching, everybody. It's been a fantastic evening of squash here at St George's Hill. SJ, bad luck. It was a phenomenal game of squash for the neutral, but you must be disappointed having clawed your way back in after a great start by Georgina. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's told that she probably hits on this court a bit more regularly than I do, which is never. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit of a, you know, as you know, it's a bit of a unique court in uh, how fast the front wall is and um, the way I tried to use that just didn't work at all. <laughs> so I had to uh, cha change the plan and Annoyingly, it just started too late in that first game because by the end of the first game, I thought I'd got a bit of momentum back. Um, but fair play to you know, fair play to Gina. She she played really well, and um, I'm not sure it's a, a court that suits suits my game. And but at times when I did get in front and d dominated some of the rallies, you know, I thought I was doing all right. And then like the last the last rally there, just you know, it wasn't a bad serve, but. I just got caught on my heels a little bit and uh, she's you know used that backhand boast again and it just it's hard to dig that that boast out on this court and well not that one I didn't even move for that one but uh, you know and wasn't quite uh, where I wanted to be physically so just uh, couldn't quite couldn't quite get over the line today but seems you know gave it gave it a good go and uh, hope, hopefully everyone enjoyed watching and uh, yeah good good luck to Gina in the, in the next match. Thanks very much, very big, magnanimous Sarah Joan Perry. We hope to see you back in the first course challenge and thank you so much for playing and all the best for the rest of this, this season and the summer and whatever the PSA Tour gets together in terms of tournaments. All the best. Thanks, Thanks so again. much. Gina, well played. The thank start you. proved to be crucial and you got off to an absolute flyer. Um, how are you known as a fast starter? <laughs> Um, yeah, the start was crucial, like you said. Um, I know SJ was talking about the court, and I felt exactly the same last time in my match against Jazz. Um, it is, like SJ said, it's like a very different court if you're not used to it. Um, so I was really aware of that because I had a bit of a slow start last time. Um, so that was in my head, think, and I knew she doesn't hit here, obviously. Um, so I knew that I would have the advantage in that sense. Um, so I just wanted to get off to a good start and just try and be disciplined really. I just wanted to go on there and have fun and just try and make myself quite difficult to win a point off of. And that was like my mentality throughout the match, was try and, try and make myself as hard as possible to break down. I mean, she taught me so many lessons last time, so I just wanted to, you know, try and keep her on there for as long as possible really and wasn't too much thinking about the score and yeah, luckily, I mean, that last shot I paid, it was just luck that I won that in the end. Um, I was getting very nervous when she started to claw her way back because um, she's so mentally strong and, you know, she, she's never down and out no matter what the score is. So, yeah, I feel lucky to win that, um, but really enjoyed it. I mean, 
she's a world class player and <laughs> I'm sure when I get on court with her next time it will be a different story. <laughs> It must have done wonders for your confidence and from a coach's perspective it was great to see you dominating when you had the chance, playing the shots at the right time. I think I commented last time about your shot selection was very good. But also being able to scrap, knowing when you have, you, you're under the cosh a bit and you have to scrap against a world class player and you covered some ground <laughs> as SJ put you all over the court but you knew how to relieve the pressure. Yeah. And, and just hang on in there and that's a very important quality to have huh. how much do you work on the physical side yeah I mean the, yeah physical side is probably one of my main strengths um, I do a lot a lot of work on that but I've had some less technical deficiencies maybe that I've been working on a lot with my coach Ben so I've kind of tried to put the physical aspect to one side recently and just focus on you know the technical side of my game which is what I really need to improve on and that's what I'm happy about today I feel like obviously against SJ you're under pressure so much just from the way she works the ball around the court so I was just happy that I was like you said um, about my shot selection I was mostly 90% of the time happy with how I conducted um, my shots and um, I just didn't want to force it I didn't want to give her too many like easy cheap points which I think I did last time so yeah I was really happy yeah you, you certainly didn't I mean were you surprised at how much how many of you all got good shots? SJ got back as well, as you, you expect that. Uh, yeah, I knew. I mean, I knew she would get my shots back. She does so well to reverse the pressure every time. Like I watch when I'm watching her play on squash TV, and when I'm playing against her, it's she's just every time you think you have her, she just does something that reverses the pressure so quickly. So I was definitely more aware of that this time than I was last time. Um, and yeah, just try to be disciplined really, and try not to give her too many options. <laughs> well, well done today. Jeannie, you've got a great future in the game and we're delighted that you're part of the Pro Squash <laughs> Challenge. Thanks, um, Danny. Yeah, thanks so much for arranging this. Like there'll, I said. there'll be another another match soon. <laughs> we have Tesney Evans and Emily Whitlock playing off. Yeah, that'll be a great match. That'll yeah. be a great match as Looking well. Looking forward so. to it. Yeah, thanks again for doing this. It's really good for us and for the viewers. So. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we've it's a pleasure to have you as always and look forward to welcoming you back. Thanks a lot. <laughs>